Wednesday night community yoga class. Glad to have you here. So um, we're going to start in child's pose. Like, like I said, hips, 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 hips. Um, bringing your knees wide, your big toes together to touch. You can take your props and just move them off to the side. Again, blocks are not so important tonight, but a strap, a scarf, a belt, that's going to be important for the end. I'll make sure we save enough time for that juicy bit at the end. Then walk your hands out as long as you can stretch your torso and imagine as though you had a weight pressing down on your low back. Bring your knees wide enough so that you can relax your ribs down in between your legs and then bring your forehead down to touch. You want the mat to be supporting the weight of your head on, on your forehead. You'll feel that just gentle pressure in your third eye. As you inhale, imagine stretching, maybe even crawl your fingertips a little bit further towards the front of the mat without moving your hips. As you exhale, see if you can melt your torso down into the mat even more. Feel that little spot between both of your shoulder blades relax and melt. Inhale, pin your hips where they are, reach your hands forward, get your torso long. And exhale, melt, relax. If you haven't already, then gently seal your lips so that you're breathing in and out through your nose. And here with your face on the mat, you can start to feel that heat of your breath bouncing off of the mat. You can feel it, you can hear it. Maybe you can smell it. <laughs> I feel like that's one thing about face masks. You have to have gum or else you smell your own breath all the time. <laughs> all right. Then take three more breaths here. Ujjayi breath is when you breathe in and out through your nose and you feel the texture of your breath across the back of your throat. It also makes you slow down and notice your breath. When you can feel the texture, when you can hear the sound. Last time. Deep inhale, stretch long. Exhale, surrender and melt. And inhale, slowly come up to all fours. You're gonna bring your knees around. So you come to sit down on your glutes. So this pose is called Agni Sambhasana or fire log pose or fire pose. Um, we're gonna start with our left foot. Well, near you, left foot parallel to the front of your mat, feet flex back. And then you're gonna take your right leg over top so that your legs stack like a fire, like logs on a fire. And you start to feel this very intense sensation on the outside of your hips. Now, if this is maybe too much of an intense sensation, then I want you to extend the bottom leg forward so you're in a figure four position. Now, if your leg is really high, this bottom leg, that's totally fine. Sometimes, you know, this is where we start. And tonight's class is all about finding a starting point, right? Accepting where you are right now, right here, and then making progress forward. It's much like prana and apana, right? You can't stretch unless you're grounded on one end. Otherwise, you're like a frisbee, you just keep going, right? You never get any longer, you never grow. Instead, you're just fleeting. So establish a baseline right here. 
If your glutes are lifted off of the mat, you can always pull in a pillow to sit under. And that makes it a little bit easier to have some elevation. If you don't know what to do with your hands, you can bring them by your side or rest them on your legs. But try and keep your spine nice and tall. Keep your ujjayi breath going so that it becomes a rhythm, a cadence that comes with you now through the rest of the class. Inhale through your nose. Got a cat with me today. And exhale through your nose. Keep your feet flexed back. Make sure that this top leg, the foot is almost hanging off. You'll know if you're kind of like cheating the hips or if you're feeling that fire. So Agni in Sanskrit is fire. So we're building, we're cultivating the fire. Inhale. And exhale. Keep the spine nice and long. And then pit, pivoting from the hips. So we're not rounding in the spine. You're going to walk your hands forward, increasing the sensation. And so if you're in figure four with the bottom leg extended, this is still going to increase the sensation. Don't worry, we're gonna slowly build our fire up, slowly gain heat. If you have your bottom leg extended and it's too much on your hamstrings, you can take one of your blocks or whatever prop you're using. You can also place it underneath that knee. So it's a little bit more supportive of hamstring openness at this point. All right, now I want you to take your hands, grab a hold of the top foot, one hand to the bottom of your foot, one hand to the outside of your knee, and slowly lift it up. All right, so with that foot still flexed, again, bottom leg can be extended or bent, you're going to hold that and just start to rotate side to side. Right. You can take big circles if that feels really good in your femur head to hip socket connection, or you can keep your foot flexed, maybe even draw it in closer, getting a leg cradle. So this is more intense sensation on the outside of that right hip. So maybe you loosen it up a little bit first and then draw it in. And then slowly with this bottom leg, I want you to plant that foot on the ground. And then you'll gently set the outside of your ankle right below the knee. So we're in a seated figure four. Now bring your hands behind you and reach your chest up. So we can start to round in our low back here if our hands are forward. Use your hands like stilts or like props so that your chest reaches towards the inside of your shin. Keep that top foot flexed, and then you can decide how close or how far apart that foot is. Breath in and out, find that easy cadence. So you're always touching back in with your breath, like a touchstone. When things get tough and things get hard, come back to this rhythm. And now with this grounded foot, you're going to start to walk it over towards the right hip. You're walking it in and then plant this top foot down on the ground. All right. So your ankle crosses over the top of your knee still. So Ardha Matsyandrasana, you're going to get, take your right hand behind your right hip, inhale your left arm up, and then exhale slowly. Bring that elbow to the outside of the knee for a gentle twist. Now, if the elbow doesn't come to the knee, just bring your hand to the knee 
and gently start to rotate around the axis of your spine. Do your best to keep pressing down through that right hip. It's going to want to lift. That's why something underneath your glutes might be helpful. I didn't put that in the prop list. Yeah, but it's always good to have a blanket nearby. Start to feel that rotation open up, especially this left shoulder blade. And try and keep your neck lined up so those seven top vertebra on the top of your spine remain in line with the rest, right? So you're not dropping it forward, dropping it back side to side. Instead, one long pull. Okay, slowly unwind. So you're still in this Ardha Matsyandrasana and you have the left leg on the bottom. All right, so that left leg, you're gonna walk it just forward a little bit so it's parallel with the front of your mat. Take this top leg and unwind it all the way back behind you. Come up, both hands in front of that front shin, flex your left foot. So we're in one leg pigeon pose. And we're only five minutes into class. I told you this is gonna be a good hip one, good hips and legs. All right, so that front foot, you can draw the heel in a little bit closer. And then keep your hands propped up in front of you. Make sure that your hips are square to the front. Gaze back down your right leg, make sure it's extended back. Maybe even walk it, heel toe it back long. And then you can untuck that, those toes if you want, or keep them tucked. You can stay up, hands pressing into the mat, or maybe lower down your pigeon. If you have the props, you can always bring them in front of you to bring your elbows down onto. Another thing I like to do is bring my elbows down to the mat and using my thumbs, gently find the top of the eye socket just right underneath where your eyebrows start. And gently rest your skull here. It kind of stretches the bridge of your nose long, stretches some of the fascia in your face. Again, take a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. Breathe very soon. Inhale. And exhale, slowly warming up the hips. That fire definitely is smoldering. Take another deep breath in and deep breath out. Release your hands slowly. Walk yourself back up. You'll come back down on that left hip and swing your legs back around forward. Extend them out in front of you, and then just whew, let the calves drop down onto the mat. Wiggle it out, and we'll move on to the second side. So, right shin on bottom, foot flex so you're lining it up so that the Middle of the shin lines up with your spine, parallel with the front of your mat, and then left on top. Flex that foot, make sure the heel edge is kind of hanging over the right knee. Maybe scoop your glutes back so you have a good foundation, both hip points pressing into the mat. And if it felt good, you just on the other side, Slip a blanket or a pillow underneath your hips. Again, modification is to extend the right leg out. You wanna make sure that that extended leg, if you're doing that variation, is flexed so that your uh, kneecap doesn't just kind of swirl around. Instead, it's supported by the structure of tendons, ligaments, and muscles 
that activate when you flex your foot back. And then take the same position with your hands as you did on the first side. So maybe resting your hands on your knees. You're having your palms by your side. It's a good reminder, this variation, to keep your spine nice and straight. I like to imagine um, a Salvador Dali painting where my arms are like those sticks holding up something that's kind of melting, right? It's about finding a little bit of release, a little bit of ease in the posture, but that structure to keep your body erect. Inhale through your nose, keeping your lips gently sealed. And then exhale through your nose. Another breath in. And then this time as you exhale, start to hinge forward. Being mindful of keeping your spine straight so that you're not rolling and caving your shoulders forward, but instead taking as much of a hinge as you can, as feels good, right? Before you collapse the structure. So we don't wanna do that. Instead, we wanna keep the structure, keep the integrity and just deepen the posture. So stoke that fire, take a little breath, or maybe it's like you're using a paper plate. Come on fire, get bigger. So whatever your hips need today. Another deep breath in and out. Giving yourself the opportunity to stay in these deep poses, these really intense poses for a little bit longer, right? You wanna like kind of just move through them really quickly. So I'm asking you to breathe through them and hold the pose. All right, with your hands, you're gonna place your right hand on the bottom of your left foot, support underneath that top knee, and then lift that leg up. Maybe take some hip circles first, lubricating that ball and socket joint. And then start to deepen the pose, keeping that foot flex, you're gonna draw it closer to your chest. You can take the outside edge of that foot, nestle it into your elbow, wrap the other arm around. Maybe leg cradle, rock the baby from side to side. Either keep a gentle movement or find stillness. Sometimes if you, you know, just squeeze it in, maybe breathing through that for a couple breaths, keeping your spine nice and long, or potentially just a little bit of rotation feels better tonight. And then slowly walk that right foot over, plant the foot on the ground. And then gently place the outside of your ankle on top of that thigh. Walk your heel in as close as feels good. Press your hands behind you. And then using your hands as the extra support, like a buttress support, reach your chest towards the inside of your shin. Flex that top foot back. So it can be, you know, a very wide, long figure four. It can be compressed and tight. Ever feels like you are getting a deep stretch. You're keeping that fire going on the outside of your left hip. Again, keeping the spine nice and straight. Another deep breath in. And then as you exhale, heel toe the right foot across towards the left hip. Enough so that you can plant that left foot down on the mat. 
Now you wanna do your best to keep a weight in that left hip. So my glutes actually are slightly elevated off the ground. You might be able to sit all the way down. Um, and again, it might feel good to just put a blanket underneath so you have something to press into. Then you're gonna take your left hand down outside your left hip, inhale, right arm up. And then exhale, twist, elbow or hand to the outside of your knee. Inhale, straighten your spine. Try and keep your chin in line with your sternum and then exhale, rotate. So you can let this twist be as deep or as supportive as you want. You can imagine your IT band from the outside of your hip to the outside of your knee, just getting a little bit longer with the pressure and the elongation from your elbow or your hand. Returning to our ujjayi breath. Another inhale through your nose. And exhale. So with that foot that's by your left hip, you're gonna draw it out a little bit. Take the top leg and a big circle all the way around and back. Bring your hands to the front of your mat. Prop yourself up. Gaze down the length of your left leg. Heel toe it back behind you for Ekapada Raja Kapatasana. One leg king pigeon pose, Raja king. And then using your hands, square your shoulders, square your hips. Keep flexing that bottom foot so you're pressing the outside edge into the mat. And then either stay elevated and supported here or start to walk your torso forward. The goal being to lengthen your entire spine and then eventually melt your chest down, letting the weight of your torso and the weight of gravity work the outside of that right hip. You can keep that back leg either flexed or press the top of the foot down into the ground. Take a deep breath in and exhale. Can you melt? Can you let go of tension somewhere in your body? Potentially too here, you might be holding that tension in your neck. You might be holding that tension in a shoulder blade. So wherever we have tightness and when we start to dig into that tightness, the fascia, so that I like to call it like a slip coat or slip sheet between the skin and your muscles can trigger just like a candy wrapper where you pull one side and there's just this line that radiates all the way across. So just like that, pulling and stretching the fascia can start to trigger tightness somewhere else in your body. So that's why you might feel it in your neck. That's why you might feel it in a shoulder blade. That's why you might feel it on the outside of your knee. Just notice those areas of tightness. Breathe in, focus, like your breath is a heating pad onto that spot. And then your exhale is a release. Take another deep breath in. And out. And inhale, slowly bring yourself back up. Roll down onto the right hip, bring both legs around. Send them out in front of you. And again, give the back of your legs a gentle tap, warm up on the mats. Whew. Bring your hands to the outside of your hips. Give yourself a little gentle massage. And then you're going to roll over onto all fours. Trying to bring a little bit more fluid movement into our hips. All right, plant your hands down on your shoulders. 
knees under your hips for all fours. And then you're going to extend the left arm forward, right leg back. Now you wanna make sure that you have a good amount of clearance around you for this movement. Inhale, extend, engage your core, draw your navel up into your spine, and then exhale, elbow to knee. Like what do we move? We're not even moving off our mat yet. Inhale, forward. Now you're gonna bring the left arm out to the left side and the right leg over. Now, usually this is really hard on the outside of the hip, but we did a lot of stretching there, so it actually kind of maybe feels better. Inhale forward, exhale, tap elbow and knee. Inhale, extend, exhale out. Inhale forward, exhale, elbow to knee. Like, okay, I got this. Keep pressing your right hand into the mat. Inhale forward. Exhale out to the side. Inhale, left arm forward, right leg back. This time we're gonna add on. You're gonna swing your left arm around, bend your right knee, tap your toe behind you. Inhale forward. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, reach. Exhale, left arm out to the left side, right foot out to the right side. Inhale, forward. Exhale, tap. Left hand to right foot behind you. Inhale, forward. Exhale, elbow to knee. All right, last time through. Inhale, extend. Exhale, left hand out to left side, right leg out to right side. Inhale forward, exhale, tap, and then hold. Take your left hand, find the top of your right foot. Press your right hand into the mat. Start to kick your right leg into your left foot. Flex those toes back. Inhale, find an opening in your left shoulder. And then you wanna make sure that your gaze is still down on the mat. Put a foot in front of your hand, centered so that your spine can stay long. Use your core to hold you up for those small stabilizing muscles. Spread your right palm, press it down into the mat. Slowly release, extend, and bring both hands, both knees down. We're gonna extend the left arm straight up and then exhale, drop your left hand through your right, thread the needle, relax your left ear down to the mat. Take your right hand, tent it up so the palm is lifted, finger pads pressed down into the mat. Keep pressing that hand into the mat. Maybe walk your arm, your left arm a little bit longer. See if you can relax your neck. If it feels good, you could try the variation where you extend the right leg. You can also take this rounded right hand, reach it up, and take a half bind. Finding the pants on the left hip, or maybe walking your hand all the way around to the top of your quad, if it can get there. Just a couple options, feeling into, you know, where, you, where that stretch might be able to get into it tonight. Take a breath there. If your right leg is extended, bring your knee back down. If your right hand is lifted, Bring that down to the mat. So we press up, reach your left arm up, and then bring it back down to the mat. All fours, reach your right arm out now, and extend your left leg back. Inhale. Remember, gaze is down. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, reach and extend. 
All right, we're going out to the side. Right arm hovers out to the right side. Flex the left toes and bring those out to the left side. So you want like the arch to be hovering over the floor as high as you can lift it. Inhale forward, using your core, not letting yourself sag in the middle. Exhale, elbow to knee. And then really make that connection. Press your elbow into your knee so that you get that isometric contraction. Inhale, lift long, feel your spine extend, and then core work, right arm out to the right, left leg to the left. Inhale forward. Exhale, elbow to knee. Press them into the opposite. Feel your spine round up to the ceiling. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale out to the side. This time we'll add on. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, bend your left knee with your right hand, reach around, tap. All right, you're like, where is that? Maybe you have to look. <laughs> Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, out to the side. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, bend the left knee, tap. Inhale, lengthen, elbow to knee. Inhale, lengthen, exhale out to the side. Inhale, lengthen, this time we're gonna hold. Bend your left knee, exhale, right arm comes around. Find your foot, reach your fingers across the top of your foot. I like to even put my thumb into the arch of that foot and then start to kick your left leg into your right palm. Press, inhale, open your right shoulder to the front, the collarbone. Keep your gaze down, find your balance. Another breath in. And exhale, slowly release, extend, and bring both hands down. Figure four. Right arm lifts, inhale. Exhale, thread the needle, right arm underneath the left. Bring your right ear down to the mat. Tent your left fingertips. Walk your right arm a little bit more through so that you're resting on the outside of your right shoulder and your right ear on the mat. And stay here or Maybe build on the pose, taking that half bind. Maybe working a little bit more on balance, extending the left foot, taking the half bind. Or just simply letting your shoulder melt down onto the mat. Feeling that openness now on the back of your shoulder, where your shoulder blade starts to shift away from your spine. I like to think of that as exposing all of those knots that can form right underneath your shoulder blade, starting to stretch that out to the side. Okay, and then if you did any add-ons, slowly bring your knee back down, your hand back down, press into your left arm, inhale up, and then exhale down. Hands and knees off the mat. Tuck your toes and then lift your hips up for a short down dog. Keep your knees gently bent. Relax your head and then let your head hang down. So now just using gravity to lengthen our spine. Take a deep inhale. Press your palms into the mat, especially point your finger and thumb. And then exhale, let your heels and your head melt a little bit closer. And inhale. And exhale. Look forward. We're slowly going to move to the front of our mat. So walk your feet. Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, press into your shins, take a halfway lift. And then exhale, fold. 
So this is our first time really getting into our hamstrings. And we are gonna do a little bit of that neck traction. So you're gonna take your hands, interlace them, and then that pinky edge is gonna come right to the base of your spine. Wrap your forearms around so that your forearms catch the tip of your jaw or the bottom of your ears. Heel toe your feet out a little bit wider if your hamstrings are tight. And then fold down, keeping a gentle bend in your knees. Let the weight of your hands and your arms start to add a little bit of traction at the back of your neck. So you're lengthening your neck long. Take a deep inhale and exhale. One more time, inhale and exhale. And release your hands down. Heel toe your feet back to hip width distance apart. Inhale again, take a halfway lift. And then exhale, fold. Press to your feet, inhale, come all the way up to standing. And then exhale, bring your hands down to heart center. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, fold. Hands come down, step your left leg back, left knee down. Press the top of your left foot down. Inhale, sweep your arms up. Anjaneyasana, low lunge. So again, getting a little bit into the hips, but now more into the front and the back. So your psoas, which connects from the base of your spine through your hips to the front, starts to get a little bit of opening as you draw your right knee forward. Take another breath in. We're gonna, again, interlace our hands. So this is called brain cradling, a good neck support. Again, pinky edge right to the base of your skull. And I want you to wrap your palm around your neck. So it's like a brace. Start to draw your elbow tips up and then use the palm of your hands around your neck to actively give yourself a little bit of lift. Inhale, exhale, lift your head, the weight off your spine. Release your hands, inhale up, and then exhale down, plant your hands, tuck your toes, step back, plank, take a breath in. Exhale, lower all the way down to the mat. Press the top of your feet down, inhale, Bhujangasana, Cobra Pope. Exhale, down, tuck your toes and back. Inhale, left leg lifts. Exhale, step your left foot forward, right knee down. Inhale, sweep your arms up. Anjaneyasana, low lunge. We're just gonna stay for one more breath. And then exhale, bring both hands to the inside of your left foot. Pivot on your left heel so that your left toes go out to the left side of the mat and you can walk it out a little bit to the side. Runner's lunge variation, draw your chest forward. Then you're gonna tuck your right toes under, lift your right knee up, take a breath in, keep gazing forward, exhale, step wide, come to Malasana at the front of your mat. Elbows to the inside of your knees. Inhale, press up to standing. Spin your toes forward. Exhale, hands down to heart center. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold. Step your right leg back. Bring your right knee down. Untuck those right toes. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, start to let your hips come forward. Left knee shift forward. Take your hands, take the opposite interlace, and again, we're gonna do brain cradling. That's a forest yoga term. <laughs> Good visual. Bring your pinkies to the base of your skull, and again, palms around your neck. Get a good grip. Elbow tips come forward. Inhale, start to lift your elbow tips up and find the weight of your head in the palms of your hands. Inhale and exhale. Keep your core engaged. Inhale, release your arms, lift them up. Exhale, plant your hands down, tuck your toes, step back. 
Inhale, exhale, lower all the way down to the mat. Press the tops of your feet down. Inhale, Bhujangasana, Cobra. Chest up and through your arm. Exhale, lower down, tuck your toes. Press up and back. Downward facing dog, right leg lifts, inhale. Exhale, step your right leg forward. Bring your right knee, left knee down. The right leg's in the front. Inhale, reach your arms up. Anjaneyasana, low lunge. Exhale, bring both hands down to the inside of your right foot. Move the right foot over it a little bit and then pivot on your heel, toes out. Bring your palms down. Inhale, tuck your back toes. Exhale, lift your back knee. Inhale, step forward. Exhale, sink your hips down, Malasana. Inhale, press up to standing. Spin toes forward. And now this time I want you to bring your feet hip width distance apart. So hip width does not mean your feet are so wide that your hips could drop down beneath your heels. Instead, I want you to bring your hands to your hip point and then your femur head. So that radiating down your feet is hip width distance apart. Make two fists, drop them down between the inside of your big toes. All right, and come back up, reach your arms up. Nice, exhale, bend your knees, sit down, down and back, Utkatasana, chair pose. Now, depending on how open your shoulders feel tonight, your arms could be forward, they could be lifted, they could be parallel with the ground, whatever feels good. Breath in and out, sit down and back. Move the weight into your heels, lift your toes up, keep your gaze forward, inhale, exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift, exhale, plant your hands, step back. Plank pose, inhale, exhale, lower down halfway, you can always come down to your knees, and then kick your toes back, inhale, through upward facing dog, Urva. Wait, I can <laughs> Adho Mukha Svanasana. So your hips are lifted, hands pressing down into the mat, heels drawing in together. And then rolling over your toes, back into downward facing dog. Inhale, lift your left leg high. And then exhale, step your left foot forward by your left thumb. If you have a nice long lunge, you're gonna take that back foot, step it out to the right, and then bring the right heel down. So it's at an angle. Keep pressing through the outside edge of that foot, then rise up, Virabhadrasana one, warrior one. So in a forward view, the back leg is out to the side. So you have, and you can see from this, angle, you have a hip width distance between your legs. It's not like you're lining up, brings a lot of strain to the knee, the outside of that calf. Instead, you have space to try and work this, you have left foot forward, so right hip forward. Keep generously bending into that front knee, and then gaze forward. Right, so we're gonna make a big transition here. You're gonna move the weight into that front foot, bring your right leg around and find figure four. So we were here on the ground at the beginning of class. You're gonna keep that foot flex. Again, the outside of your ankles just above your knee. Sit down and back. Breath in and breath out. Then inhale, press to your standing leg, let your right leg drop down. Exhale, Utkatasana, chair pose at the front of your mat. Breath in. You can relax your shoulders down or arms by your side if your shoulders are getting fatigued. 
One more breath here. And then exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Plant your hands, step, step back into plank. Take a breath in plank, keep it long. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, pull through, Adho Mukha Svanasana, upward facing dog. Did not roll off the tongue the first time. So again, hips are lifted. You're pressing actively through the top of your feet. Legs are nice and strong. And then lifting with your hips to start, drawing your navel back in. Roll over your toes, downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg lifts. Exhale, step the right foot forward, right by your right thumb. Gaze down the length of your left leg, step it out to the left side, and then ground that heel down. Keep pulling your right hip back, left hip forward. You want to keep that left leg, the back leg, super straight. Reach your arms forward and up. Virabhadrasana one, warrior one. Take a breath in and out. Maybe letting your right knee draw a little bit more forward, pressing through the outside edge of the right heel. Breath in and breath out. Gaze forward, start to move the weight into your right leg. Step forward, lift the left leg up. Swing it around, figure four. You breath in and out. Flex that left foot. Sit down and back. Breathe in and breathe out. And release that foot down. Inhale, come all the way up to standing. Exhale, hands down to heart center. Pause. Take a breath here. Inhale. And exhale. All right, we're going to move through that. Surya Namaskar B, or Sun Salutation B series. One more time. This time, adding on a deeper hip stretch into that figure four. Maybe getting into an arm balance. So you this side, stretch your arms up. Exhale, sit down and back, Utkatasana, chair pose. Move your gaze forward, breath in, and then exhale out, so you a little bit deeper. One more, breath in, exhale, fold. Inhale, press into your shins, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your hands, step back, plank. Grip your hands into the mat, shift forward. Exhale, chaturanga, lowering down just halfway. Press your toes back, inhale, upward facing dog. Heels drawing towards each other. And exhale, lift your hips, draw your navel back. Coming over your toes, downward facing dog. Inhale, lift the left leg high. Exhale, step the left foot forward. Set your right foot at an angle, a little bit out to the side. Inhale, rise up, warrior one, Virabhadrasana one. Hips and shoulders squaring towards the front of your mat. Breath in and breath out. Move the weight into your left foot. Right leg comes around and forward, finding that figure four. All right, so. You might want your blocks somewhere close by. They can be an option for deepening this without having to go all the way down to the ground. Now, sorry if they weren't by the front of your mat. All right, so figure four. Keep those toes flexed. So your left foot, and I'll, I'll mirror you guys. So your left foot is planted, your right leg is around. And then bring your hands down to heart center. Start to fold forward. Again, remembering what we did in our figure four, hinging at the hips. This is where the blocks can come in handy. You can plant your hands into the blocks. And if you're using something creative like a water bottle or you, know, you can stack your cans so you have something to press your hands into to stabilize. Keeping that foot flexed. 
just this forward fold here. Feeling your hips pressed back can be a great place to work. If you'd like to work a little bit more into this arm balance, left foot down, right foot. You're gonna bend your knee so much so that your hands can come down to the mat. Your toes are going to curl around your tricep. And then you're gonna press your ankle and your shin into the tricep of your arms. Start to hinge forward, lifting your heel up so that the weight moves into your hands. And maybe you stay right here. So the weight of your body starts to make this hip stretch really a lot more intense. You can come forward, maybe lifting that left leg up. So flying pigeon or extend the left leg long. So the extension really requires pushing that right shin into your hands. And we'll slowly release, bringing both feet down and coming to standing. Reach your arms up. Exhale, bring your hands down to heart center. Stabilize, press your feet down. Find the rhythm, find the cadence of your breath. Inhale. And exhale. Whew, maybe your heart is racing. Inhale. Exhale. Drop your hands, sweep them wide. Inhale. Urva Hastasana, hands up. Exhale. Sit down and back. Utkatasana, chair pose. Breath in, breath out. Inhale. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, plant your hands, step back, plank. Inhale and plank. Exhale, lower down halfway. Inhale, upward facing dog. Hips lead, downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg up. Exhale, step your right foot forward and set your left foot for warrior one. Inhale, draw your arms up. Exhale, bend generously in your right knee. So find a strong foundation here, especially in that front foot. Move your gaze forward to something not moving. Start to move the weight into your right leg and swing your left leg around for that standing figure four. Your hands down to heart center. Maybe folding forward, finding those blocks. And if you're going to go into the Ekapada Galambasana flying pigeon pose, bring your hands down, curl your toes around your tricep, and then walk your hands a little bit forward so you can start to fold forward, feeling the weight of your shin on the back of your triceps. And then lifting your right heel up, keep gazing forward. The more you look forward, the weight starts to balance from your heavy legs and hips into the weight of your head. And then either extending or keeping your leg in. Take another two breaths. And then slowly coming back out, bringing the left leg down. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, drop your thumbs onto your sternum. Slow down your breath, inhale. And exhale. Again, inhale and exhale. Release your hands and make your way down onto your back. You will want 
whatever you're using for a strap tonight in one hand as you lower down. Extend both of your legs. And then we'll start with the left knee, drawing it in, using both hands to squeeze your knee down towards your side ribs. Then unwind your strap. Using the middle of the strap, you're gonna place it across the bottom of your foot, right in the high part of the arch, and then press your left foot straight up to the ceiling. You want it no closer than perpendicular. So if your hamstrings are still not allowing you, you can have them forward. You can also take the right knee and bend it. And that might give you a little bit more length to get this leg perpendicular. Taking the strap in both hands, choke up as high as you can on the strap without lifting your head. And then let the weight of your arms relax and start to pull your foot gently down. You can drop your head from side to side, making sure that you're not straining your neck to do this work. And then flex your foot. See if you can press it up towards the ceiling. And now start to actively draw your foot down really grounding your femur head into your hip socket, feeling that whole left side become stable. Okay, lighten up on the straps. You're gonna take both of the straps in your right hand, keep flexing your left foot. Take your left hand and you want that thumb to find your hip crease. So work it in, finding your hip crease, pull your left hip crease down, and then draw your foot just past midline. So it's a really small movement. I'll rotate so you can see hip forward and it's just past midline. And so you're anchoring that left hip down, stretching the IT in, which I know is one of our favorites. So it's not a big movement. Now slowly come back to center, bend your left knee, remove the strap and extend it long. Ooh, probably feels a little bit different. <laughs> Bring your right knee in, interlace your hands at the bottom of your knee, and then exhale, compress thigh to side ribs. Inhale, release, take the strap, place it across the bottom of your foot, press your foot straight up to the ceiling. Again, no farther forward than perpendicular. You can always plant this left foot on the ground to make that a little bit easier. Take your hands, choke up as high as you can on the strap without lifting your head, and then relax your arms, let the weight of your arms pull your leg down. Breath in. And then exhale, roll across the back of your skull, side to side, releasing in your neck. And then find that flat spot back of your head where it just naturally rests. Press actively through your right foot and now start to activate your arms, pull down. So you feel not only the weight of the leg, but the active arms pulling your right hip down, pulling your right femur head back down. Press through the heel, press through the ball of your right foot. And then exhale, lighten up. Bring both sides of the strap into your left hand with your right hand. Take your thumb, nestle it into that right hip crease, pull the right hip crease forward. And then flexing your right foot, let it drop past midline. So if you're looking at a clock, it's about at 11 o'clock. So it's not going very far. Keep your right hip anchored, inhale. And then exhale. Inhale, slowly release, bring both arms 
back up, move the strap away, and bring your right leg down to meet your left. Plant both hands on top of your hips, fingers directing in towards your pelvis and the palm of your hand on both hip points. Relax your elbows, relax your neck, take an inhale. Exhale, let your toes drop out to the side and let your legs melt. Inhale. Exhale, feel your pelvis underneath your palms release. Inhale. Exhale, feel your shoulders melt down into the mat. Inhale. Exhale, relax your head, your neck, the muscles of your face, your ears, and the sides of your lips. And a couple more natural breaths here, lying on our backs. And so I plant your feet down onto the mat. Let your knees drop to one side. Gently press yourself back up to seated. Taking a comfortable seat, bring your hands together to heart center. Take a deep inhale and exhale. Lift your thumbs. The third eye center. Be curious. Follow your bliss. Namaste.